Welcome back. What I want to do in this video is I want to get to know aldehyde dehydrogenases. And I was actually doing the amino acid catabolism playlist, and we ran across an enzyme called glutamate semialdehyde dehydrogenase. And I hadn't made one of these videos yet, but I thought it would be a good idea to put this in here, just so you can get an idea of exactly what's happening. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the mechanism of aldehyde dehydrogenases. And this is a really, really um, this is a really important mechanism, not only because it's used in amino acid catabolism, but it's used all over the place. For instance, um, if you were to ingest ethanol, which is basically the alcohol that's in beer, um, the alcohol is going to get metabolized to acetaldehyde, and that's done by alcohol dehydrogenase. And that's, a, that's an equilibrium reaction, but if you're loading the system up with ethanol, it's going to force the equilibrium towards acetaldehyde. Well, acetaldehyde is going to react with aldehyde dehydrogenase, and it's going to follow this exact mechanism. And, and so too is glutamate semialdehyde dehydrogenase. The difference is going to be the identity of this group right here, and that's the R group. Okay, They're all going to have this aldehyde, and the mechanism is basically going to be identical. Okay, And basically the functional residues in the active site are going to be a cysteine thiolate and then a glutamate that starts out in the deprotonated form. Okay, And I'll go ahead and mention this, that the mechanism is not fully understood, at least when the terminal nucleophile is water. There's actually an inferred terminal step, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But for now, let's actually look at the mechanism. Okay, so the initial step in aldehyde dehydrogenase, this is going to be a nucleophilic attack of the cysteine thiolate on this carbonyl carbon, and that's going to cause the generation of a tetrahedral intermediate, and that can be seen in the second picture right here. Now, the tetrahedral intermediate is going to collapse. Okay, So what's going to happen is... The carbonyl bond is going to reform, but instead of kicking off the cysteine residue, this hydride is going to be forced to come off. And it's going to attack this top carbon of the nicotinamide ring right here, and that's going to cause a double bond rearrangement in which this terminal pi bond ends up on the nitrogen atom. And so, by the way, this molecule that I have drawn right here, this is either um, NAD or NADP+, and it depends on the aldehyde dehydrogenase. If we're talking about acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, specifically it's NAD+. But in the case of some enzymes, like glutamate semialdehyde dehydrogenase, this particular enzyme can react with either NAD+, or NADP+. And it's also an equal, equilibrium reaction, so it can go the other direction as well. Okay, and so as a result, this can be either NADPH, or NADH, okay, and it just depends, okay. So in this initial step of aldehyde dehydrogenases, this is where we generate our reduced cofactor, okay. And so as a result, we generate another another trigonal planar complex. Now in this step of the mechanism, we're going to have the hydrolysis. So what's going to happen is there's ordinarily a glutamate in the active site, and it's going to deprotonate water. And the effective hydroxide is going to come and attack the carbonyl carbon in the thioester bond. And that's going to generate a tetrahedral intermediate. And that tetrahedral intermediate can be seen here. Now, this is the last part of the mechanism, and I want to make this perfectly clear that part of this is just an inferred step. So what's going to happen is this lone pair that's on this alkoxide in the tetrahedral intermediate, it's going to collapse, reforming the carbonyl. And in the process, it's going to kick off the thiolate, which leaves as your leaving group. Okay, and then in the process, what that generates is a carboxylic acid, okay? But as we know, once the carboxylic acid leaves the active site, it's going to generate this carboxylate form because it's going to undergo a proton exchange with solution. Okay, now what I want to be perfectly clear about is the step right here that's on the bottom, this step right here, this is an inferred step. Okay, remember that with enzymes, um, they're catalysts, and the definition of a catalyst is it's unchanged in the reaction, at least it's net unchanged, right? But if you recall, we started off with a glutamate in the active site, right? This is our glutamate, right? But we end up, after the whole mechanism is done, with a glutamic acid. So what the inferred step is, is it's going to be a deprotonation by water, okay? 
and the water as hydronium is going to leave the active site regenerating glutamate okay so you are in aldehyde dehydrogenases at least through the proposed mechanism you are going to decrease the pH because what you're doing is you're going to increase the concentration of hydronium it's of course not going to be very significant but it is worth mentioning okay so this was the mechanism of aldehyde dehydrogenases in which the terminal nucleophile is water we've seen other aldehyde dehydrogenases in which uh, phosphate was the terminal nucleophile and the mechanism was still virtually identical okay just remember you have a cysteine thiolate in the active site and you also have a glutamate and keep in mind that in the first step that's where we form a reduced cofactor in the case of glutamate gamma semialdehyde dehydrogenase we can form either NADPH or NADH I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on what's happening in this step see you in the next video